Hey y'all, I'm back. Here's me and baby Gert. This is baby AJ. Shout out to her. This is her labor and delivery story. Um, I did the same thing for Cameron, so I decided to come back and do the same thing for Miss Gert here. I do have now two children, two beautiful, healthy, happy kids. I got one of each. I have a girl and I have a boy now. So God is good. He is a good guy because now I don't have to have no more kids, okay? Shout out to my future husband. I hope you have children. I'm here for a blended family. I'm here to be a bonus parent, okay? I have no desire to push no more kids on my cat <laughs> or get them cut out at this point, okay? I don't have the desire, okay, future husband? In case if you watch this, if you ever come across this video, I hope you got all the kids you want to have because we probably won't be having none together, okay? This is your daughter and you have a son named Cameron, okay? Thank you. Moving on. So this is the labor and delivery story. Gert was born um, March 15th at 12 something in the afternoon. Oh, it was a glorious birth, okay? So for those of you who do not know, prior to having this pregnancy with my son, I had a difficult labor. Was not difficult. Now that I'm like have hindsight in 2020 and kind of can go back and replay everything that kind of happened in the labor part. But I had a C-section, an emergency C-section with Cameron, and I had to get emergency surgery to get him out. With my daughter, as you know, or you don't know, which I'm going to explain to you, I just vaginally pushed her out. So I had a vaginal birth after cesarean, which is the VBAC, which is how I'm going to talk about it moving forward. So I had a VBAC with Miss Thing here. Um, I will say, and preface this whole story, I moving into or coming off this third trimester video and just talking about labor and delivery, I did not have any intention or any um any intention or any type of way that she was going to get here. I wasn't really prepared for another C-section, but I also wasn't prepared to push her out. I just knew she had to get out. That's all I knew. I didn't know if I was going to push her. I didn't know if I was going to elect to just go with the C-section. I had already been scheduled because again, I had a previous C-section. So I will say, um, my doctor, Kara Fides, shout out to my doctor, my OB, um, and his support and his staff support and and sarah eaton also was my nurse practitioner um those folks were very very vocal and very very supportive of a vbac um most times 98 percent of the time most doctors will never elect to go into the vbac territory you hear me they are absolutely saying no. You could walk in there and say, I'm going to push this baby out. I'm going to push this baby out. I would say, absolutely not. Here's your C-section date. Here's your baby's birthday. We'll see you in the OR on that day. They're not willing to have that conversation with you. But because my pregnancy had gone without any issues, blood pressure was great, um, no diabetes, no other. I didn't even have a, a yeast infection this time or any type of anything this time. Just nothing. It was just plain. It was very healthy. Um, so... Like I said, he pushed it and he really supported it. And he said, don't even worry about the C-section date. You're not getting a C-section. You're going to push this baby out. And he would tell me that pretty much every time he saw me. And I was like, I don't know about that, my guy. I never did it before. <laughs> I don't know her. I, I've never even thought about it. It just was not a thing. So he was very, very supportive and encouraging the entire pregnancy. Um, and right even up until I had her. Um, the day he saw me, the day that I actually had to go into the hospital. And he was like, oh, you'll be fine. You'll be all right. You've been fine this whole time. I don't, you know, I'll see you next week when we actually, you know, her due date, which was the 22nd. He said, we'll see you next week. Don't worry about it. We'll take your blood pressure again and go on from here. So to get into how we got here. So a little bit before we got to the doctor's appointment for this, I woke up on the, the Thursday because I went to the hospital on Thursday and had her on Friday. Woke up. It was like, it was supposed to be a regular day. I know I woke up tired. I said, like, oh, I'm so tired. I don't feel like doing all this, but all right. So I get up. I go to get my son up from his room. Go to his room. Notice there's a bunch of towels and stuff on his bed from floor, which is not unusual because he gets water everywhere when he gets in the shower. So I said, okay, this is cool. Cam, come on, get up. Get your stuff up. Get Help me get these towels up and put them in the washer so we can wash them while, you know, I'm out or while I'm at work. And when I come home, I'll flip and finish the laundry. So I get in there and the towels are soaking wet. Like there's a whole bunch of water on the floor. And I said, Cam, what did you do? What did you break the toilet? What did you do? What did you do? I'm studying yelling at him. Now my blood pressure's up because my bathroom floor is full of water. There's towels everywhere. It's not coming up. I'm fucking panicking. So I'm like, all right, fuck it. Let's just get all the towels up because we can't leave these towels on the floor like this. So let's just get all the towels up. We'll throw them in the washer. We'll start the washer. 
this will be a problem for when I get home from work. Because at this point, or I, I was off that day. This will be a problem for when I get off. Because I don't have time for this. So I get him situated. We fussed in the car. He said, Mom, I didn't do it. I don't know what happened. I just knew it was so much water. I was just trying to get it up because I knew he was going to be upset. And I said, Cam, at this point, I don't even care. Just let it go. So I get him, drop him off. Go home. Notice the water is still not up. So, and I had a doctor's appointment, so I stopped home before I went to the doctor's appointment. I said, ain't this a bitch? This water is still not up. I flipped the things and put them in the dryer. Tried to put some worse towels and I tried to get the water. But I was like, it's not happening. So I said, okay, I'm going to be late for my appointment. So I leave there. Go to my appointment. Obviously, I'm nervous, irritated because my bathroom is flooded. So I'm like, ah, at the appointment. Take my weight. Everything's good. Get in there, take my blood pressure. My blood pressure's up. So I said, well, here's what happened this morning. You know, I had water all over my bathroom. I'm a little bit agitated. That's a big deal. You know, so she was like, okay, that makes sense. So I was elevated. He goes and he checks me, finds her heartbeat. Her heartbeat is perfectly fine. She's in there chilling, living her best life as she did the entire fucking pregnancy. So I said, okay. So he said, well, I noticed that they said it was elevated. Less, you know, you waited. They took it again. It was still elevated. Waited a little bit more. Gave me some water. It was still elevated. So they was like, listen, your blood pressure is not coming down. It's too high for us. Straight to the emergency room. So obviously, I don't go straight to the emergency room. You know what Corinne did? Because Corinne is a single mom. I go get Cameron from school. Because I don't know what they're going to say when I go to the emergency room. I do feel a little bit off. I ain't going to hold you. I know my blood pressure was up because I did feel a little bit just like tight and just like I didn't film myself. So I was like, yeah, I guess I got to do have to go to the hospital. So I went and grabbed Cameron, went home, grabbed our bags, the hospital bags. Because I had a dream the night before and it was like, get put the bags in the car. And I said, put, what, why am I putting the bags in the car? I'm not having no baby. I'm going to work tomorrow. The fuck? The whole time they told me last night she was hoping she was coming. <laughs> they told me the night before she was coming. And I said, no, she not. She ain't she coming here. So I went home, let him pack a little bit, you know, bag of his stuff that he wanted. Um, in case I didn't come home and I had to stay overnight. Um, so we did that. I dropped him off at my mom's, went to the store. Um, and then I proceeded to the emergency room by myself. Um, so I went to the emergency room and I was like, it'll be fine. I left the bags in the car cause I was like, for one, it'll be fine. No stress, you know? So I get in there and it's still a little elevated in it, but they're like, this is not really as that high, but because it is a little elevated, we're going to monitor you to see if it, you know, naturally kind of decreases and comes down. So I get back in there, they're monitoring me. They got the monitor on her. Um, she's doing well. She's not dipping or anything. Heart rate is good. However, my blood pressure was still up a little bit and then eventually it leveled off. You know, once I got there and was relaxed and was back there by myself just chilling, it went down and it was fine. So they were like, well, okay, well, it's fine. It wasn't really that high, but now that it's been kind of diagnosed as, you know, high blood pressure with pregnancy, um, we really think we should get the baby out. So I said, well, if the blood pressure is down, why we got to get the baby out? <laughs> why can't we leave her in there? They didn't want to leave her in there because they just, they were worried that it would spike back up. So I was talking to the resident on staff and she was like, listen, because you have it, you look tired, you ready for her to come out anyway, let's just get her out. So you can do a C-section um, or what was your original birth plan? So I told her, I said, well, the birth plan was for me to try to push. And then if that doesn't work out and she doesn't come out, then I would get the C-section, which is already scheduled for a bop bop date. So she said, okay, well, let's see how far if you are any like let's see before we decide if we're going to do the c-section or whatever we're going to do let's just see where your labor is if you're even in labor because really honestly for for we probably could send you home but then like if it goes up or you feel weird you got to come back and it, she said it just doesn't make sense so i got undressed from the waist down they do like a check and she was like you really only like one centimeter maybe so it's not like you're really in labor uh but then she was like well let me see because she's like okay well if you want to do c-section well also i'm out you know you're everything is out let's see where your scar is let's see where all that is and kind of map that out the c-section so i said okay cool because that's what i assumed i was gonna do anyway so we mapping out she was like yeah girl here's the thing i you know i'm a plus size woman she was like hey i don't think this is a good idea to do c-section um you already had the issues with healing before you know flashback to my labor and delivery story from before my c-section scar opened up got infected it was a time i had to stop breastfeeding it was a lot it was a lot with a with a two week old child. Um, I had to go back and forth to the hospital. I had to get MRIs. I like I said, I had to stop breastfeeding because I was pumping and dumping. Like I had to pump the breast milk out and dump it out because it had radiation in it. It was really not a good time. Um, it just the healing process. Like 
not that nails busted open i can't drive i can't really pick cameron up it was a lot it was really a lot and i told her all that so she was like well listen like honestly that's not gonna get no better this time and it's probably gonna be worse there are some other things we can do and give you now that are available that probably weren't available then but i as your doctor and as you know hearing your your concerns i think you need to push so i said well i don't know i don't know about that i've never done it before i don't know her i've never done her i don't i didn't even think about her i didn't even watch birth natural birth i didn't watch no birth videos i don't know which else i don't know what i thought i was gonna do when i got to the end but she was like i think you need to push we're going to induce you so she said we'll do this we'll start an induction see how far you get because i told her i said the reason why we got the c-section the first time was because after i got to like four, three or four centimeters labor stopped my son was having a hard time so they decided to do the c-section so she said okay well here's the thing we'll we'll try to induce you see how far you can get we'll put this balloon in um which i've never had and have for cameron either because i was only one centimeter when i went in that afternoon she said listen we'll put the balloon in we'll get you set up upstairs we'll see if the balloon can get you to three once we get to three we'll start pitocin once the pitocin starts and we'll see how far we can get you with the pitocin if we get the pitocin on you and you stop at four or five and that's where you go with the pitocin then we'll proceed on with the c-section but if the pitocin works properly and you do get to 10 then you'll just push so i said okay i was agreeable to that um which was fine so i get moved upstairs my best friend comes and sits with me all night shout out to my best friend akia let me tell you something it my best friends the best friends that i got they live for real so my best friend she came and sat with me all night um the balloon worked very quickly it didn't take long um i think i got it in that was at work that that was terrible okay i don't really it was terrible that's all i'm gonna say getting that balloon was terrible so they put the balloon in and it was only in for like maybe two hours and I started feeling sick and I was like, I really don't feel good. Like, I feel like I'm on vomit. I just feel sick. So she was like, okay, well, let me check it. Because if I could pull it out, then we'll just take it out if it's making you feel sick. So she checked, checked it, literally just pulled it and it came right out. So I was at three. So then they started the Pitocin. The pro at first, I didn't really feel, I was like, this shit ain't working. Ain't nothing going on. And then, you know, they increased it over time. Then it had to stop it for a while because little chicken nugget here, her heart rate was dropping. So they're like, well, let's back off of it because it's maybe stressing her out too much. Then they ramped it back up and then by 6 a.m nothing really had happened um they were still doing the pitocin i wasn't really contracting as much but i was just like kind of like right, whatever so i saw my best friend i was like look you've been here all night you've been here since yesterday the pitocin ain't doing nothing i mean i had i think i was at four or five centimeters at that point or maybe four and i was like hey girl it's only been one centimeter since we started the pitocin you can go ahead home get a shower eat do whatever you want to do work whatever you got to do and you can just come back in the afternoon because i probably won't if anything happens it's probably not gonna be to the afternoon when we get a c-section or whatever so she leaves <laughs> this is where it goes very quickly so she leaves and i try to go to sleep they give me some benadryl they give me things to go to sleep so i go to sleep for maybe an hour or two and i'm just like all right this is starting to get a little aggressive it started to, the pain started to get a little bit much it wasn't really pain it was pressure it was a lot a lot of pressure because i had had epidural at this point so i got the epidural once i got the epidural it was more like okay it was tolerable. I kind of went back to sleep for a little bit. Then, I don't know what happened with the epidural baby. I don't know if she wore off on me or something. But I just started feeling a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. I was like, okay, this ain't it. I, I felt uncomfortable. I done twisted myself down in the bed. So, like, I couldn't reach my help button. So, I'm, like, literally robbing in pain. Trying to get to the help button. Like, somebody, please come help me. Come get this epidural going again. So I'm crying and crying and crying. My mom called me. So I'm on the phone with her crying. I said, I don't think I could do this. I think I'm about to die. Like, I feel like I'm about to die. And she was like, oh my God, somebody help my baby. Because my mom, obviously, she just had these surgery. So she could not be there. And she had to watch Cameron. So I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh my God, I'm about to die. So I hang up the phone on her. Maybe five minutes later, I'm cry like crying. Like I'm in there. Me and God is having a conversation. Because I said, I'm about to come meet you. And, I and we're going to fight because you took me for my babies. But, you know, I'm crying. I'm praying. I'm like, please, God, somebody come help me, please, because I cannot. Like, this is crazy, right? So, and she, I guess she heard me. I was crying, like, really screaming and crying. So, she came in there. I guess she heard me walk past and heard me crying and screaming. So, she came in there. She's like, oh, my God, are you like, what's going on? I said, I need something for pain. I need something for It's hurt. Like, I'm in pain. So, she's like, okay, well, let me check you to make sure, you know, that it, 
that you're okay so she said let me check you let me check you. and i said i feel like i gotta push she was like oh no don't push on no, let me check you so she gets me situated some kind of way where she could check me she was like well i don't feel like it's not it's not time yet don't push don't push don't push and my body naturally like when they say like your body knows what to do when it's time whether it's induced or it's regular time like your, your body knows like because i was pushing like i had pushed before she came in there so she told me not to push she said hold on hold on let me go get the doctor so she pushed <laughs> she went and i felt it again so i tried it again while she was going the doctor came in she checked me again so they get all this stuff that she's like oh no you at 10 that baby's coming out i can see the head like the baby's coming out and i was like oh shit <laughs> okay so they get me situated um the baby put comes out with three pushes um two regular pushes and a long push and she slid right on out baby let me tell you that uh okra water that raspberry leaf tea if you want to push start drinking it um so we pushed her out no issues and again like when they say i didn't experience this before but it's my first time having a vaginal delivery I pushed her out and once she was out it was like the pain everything went away it was like perfect it was like i was fine so she's out she's screaming and yelling with her little chicken's nugget stuff covered in all types of grossness they threw her on my chest um so she was up there chilling and then they took her from me they cleaned her off and they brought her back to me um i don't know what they did i wanted her uh cord to be clamped as long as it could be i didn't really necessarily unclamp but i didn't want her to be cut or whatever situation is i think they kept on her for a little bit and um they cleaned her off and they gave her back to me and she's been chilling ever since i did try to best for when she came out but going into that this is gonna be a long video going into that i had breast reduction surgery in 2021 so i got all this this taken down thank god god is good he's a good guy he's an awesome guy okay okay so at the time when i got the surgery typically you would let your surgeon know hey i want to breastfeed so they know how to kind of proceed with what to take what not to take what to disturb what to do i at the time had no desire to have any more children i cameron was the if for me you know cameron was the the only mohican he was gonna be the last mohican okay if i had anything to do with it but god had other plans you said we got the last of the mohicans which is aiden which is her first name um so aj came <laughs> so i didn't think i was going to need to breastfeed anymore so i didn't care what he does i don't care what you do with them as long as them motherfuckers is not the size that they was when i got off this table i don't care what you do so i was not sure if i was gonna be able to breastfeed and it had come so true i'm not able to breastfeed um i have tried i did put her on when i was in the hospital um nothing was coming out she is able to latch on all those good things but it's just i don't have it you know my breasts have kind of swollen up a little bit but comes and goes might swell up go down for two days come back up go down try to pump nothing came out um so it's just kind of like mm. didn't get the breastfeed it's okay it's all right i was kind of i wasn't 100 beat for that i wanted it for her if i could do it i was gonna do it but if i can't i'm not gonna beat myself up i did make an attempt um but the breastfeeding did not work out um delivery like i said was was very quick so literally my best friend she went home at like six i had her by 12 so six hours later <laughs> she was here so she rushed back down after she got here she was one of the first people to see her um and love on her because that's her niece and she loved her um but i really appreciate her support even laying with me the night before and just hanging out and just being somebody to be there because i'm not that girl I would have did it by myself. I did. I technically did do it by myself. But I would have sat there that whole night by myself. I would have been in labor by myself. Um, I just feel like those moments I like to keep to myself. But it's all right because I have support. So she was there um, when we went. We, when I had her, her grandmother came, her brother came, her uncle came. Shout out to Uncle Stefan. He another real one. Um, he came and saw her immediately. Um, Stefan is a is a real one. That's my best friend. That man went to my house, came to the hospital, got the key to go to my house to get my son's blanket. That's a real one. I got real friends for real. I just wanted to shout them out because they really did their big one with me trying to get the, their niece here. So um, he helped me out a lot. So he came and he saw her the first day. Um, the first night was pretty cool. Um, it was all right. Trying to come down off the epidural was really kind of different. Um, they took it out obviously earlier in the day, but you know, you're trying to get your legs back. Then you got to go to the bathroom. That was a lot. It's a lot, you know. Um, I did appreciate the little ice pads. That was nice. Um, 
it was nice to be mobile like it was nice to be able to get up it was nice to hold her do all those things by myself i could not do that when i had my son um it was really really difficult um and cameron was in the nicu she was not in nicu she was with me the whole time um but having to get up and not be able to walk and have to shuffle my ass down the hall to get on the elevator and then shuffle my ass down another hallway and then shuffle my ass down like halfway through the room to get to my son after having a c-section was crazy okay and i was doing that two or three days in a row i he was in the hospital for an additional week or for the week because we should have went home after three days of the c-section because he was in the NICU he was there for four more days i stayed three of those days and only went home the night before to go to sleep so in my bed before i came back the next day and picked my baby up um and then i called him several times that night because i don't like to leave my kids in the way okay so it was just nice to have her in the room with me and be able to do all her care um and just see everything she passed everything and she's she's perfect she's perfect just like her brother perfect so the delivery was good um i don't talk about my baby dad's but he did come see her the next day um i just i don't like him i don't i don't like him <laughs> i'm sure he'll see this <laughs> i don't like him so um but i don't talk about them on here the first one either i just feel like this is not this is not their platform um and i don't like them so there's that so um everything went well um i can't complain you know i did a v-back um you gotta talk to me nice because i pushed the baby out of my vagina you gotta talk to me nice any woman that's pushed the, pushed the baby out of her vagina or had a baby cut out of her you gotta talk to them nice real nice because i did both both ways you gotta talk to me extra 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 nice you can't talk to me any kind of way okay because i had a baby cut out and i pushed the baby out okay so um that was the labor and delivery story it went well um i'm doing well postpartum has been going well i'll probably come back in a couple weeks with another like full postpartum like from the end because she'll be two months coming up here soon um personally it's been going really well i haven't really felt depressed or anxious more um i don't know is she here yet hold on yo. hold on this i'm leaving this in the video i just want to talk about that i'm leaving this in the video um i haven't been depressed at all um hold on i'm a responsible get the bins uh. i'm gonna do this in the video i'm not gonna edit this i just wanted to respond to her um so like i was saying postpartum is going really well i didn't really have much depression or anxiety um once i had my daughter everything changed I went kind of back to my original person and I'm a very like chill, relaxed, laid back person. Um, and I'm not a super emotional person. So it's like when she came out, it's like, whew, I went straight back to myself. So I haven't really been sad. I haven't really been anxious. I did get anxious when I had to first take her to her, you know, first doctor's appointment or whatever. I was like, oh my God, I got to get both of them to the car. This is a lot. Ah. Once I got her there, they saw her. Everything went back to normal. Um, any type of emotional dysregulation I have is usually because of other people around me and because I'm a spiritual advisor that comes with the territory sometimes. So just working on protection and just not being around people has helped me with that. But other than that, um, I've been okay. The appetite, I had a really heavy appetite when I, after I had her, I wanted to eat. That's kind of lessened as the weeks have gone on and my hormones have changed and my body's kind of gotten used to her being here. It's not used to the fact that we're not breastfeeding too, so that's kind of limited my appetite, so that's taking it down. Um, I was just really hungry and tired. The only thing I have now is just tiredness. Obviously, you got to get up with a baby, feed them, change them, and stuff like that. She could be a little fussy sometimes, so it could be like, ah. But other than that, she's been really well. I've been doing really well. Again, I really, really 100% put that to being in therapy having a really supportive and active community um and asking for help when you need it because you need help when you're pregnant you just and then after you have a baby you need a lot of help you do um so that's the labor and delivery store everything's been going well i also want to just like a little mini rant here's the thing people who get people pregnant okay um i want to just take the moments just a moment just just 
please watch how you talk to us you know what i mean just watch how you talk to us do your best to support your pregnant partner if y'all gonna be partner even if y'all not partner just do your best um and if you can't do your best just move out the way um far too many clients even myself in this pregnancy i've experienced it um and just women in general are tired of y'all y'all don't really be helping like that but then you want to be in the way um if you can't help just stand to the side you know what i mean if somebody needs you they will absolutely let you know um but please if you can't help and you can't do nothing and you know you can't do nothing you know you don't know what you're doing and you don't have access to get the tools to figure out just step to the side and wait till somebody say hey bop 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 come do don't try to just make it more difficult for the pregnant person who is bringing a whole nother life into the world in addition to going through all these changes and i'm saying that and i'm prefacing it i love men i, I really love men and i understand that they also experience you know pregnancy symptoms they also experience a postpartum depression as well but like be fucking for real and we gotta you know be realistic we are here to help each other and if we're not helping each other and you're not helping me and i'm not helping you we just need to separate okay and we could separate temporarily and then bring it back and keep it cute but sometimes it's not coming back we just gotta let it go okay so please if you cannot help a pregnant person this is for other people because i've got it from women too they don't be helpful either <laughs> you know they be nasty too so if you cannot help a pregnant person leave them the fuck alone that's the answer that is leave them alone that is the answer okay i had a very active community but i did have some community members who wanted to cut up okay and i left them alone and i still leave them alone to this day and they really not even community members right so again if you can't do nothing for a pregnant person just leave them alone okay that's the best bet you can do just pop out and then when you're ready to or you're able to or you have something to add or help then come on in but if you don't just leave them alone okay stop stressing them out don't stress the ladies out because that also causes preeclampsia that causes you know the issues with diabetes and a lot it's not the total cause because some of that is genetic and some of it is just happens but stress is a really really big important thing that we don't talk about enough when we talk about labor delivery or we talk about pregnancy because the amount of stress that a pregnant woman has greatly affects her pregnancy and it greatly affects the child so please if you cannot do nothing for that lady just don't stress her out just leave her alone okay leave that person alone because there are some people who give birth who are not women right or who do not identify as female or do not identify as Feminine. so leave them people alone okay if you can't do nothing just take a break step out so this was a long video but this is my labor and delivery story me and baby chicken nugget are doing very well i'm well she is well she is cute ain't she she's cute um and we're doing the best we can with what we got okay so i'll be back talking more so about postpartum because i'm just in the beginning of it who knows next week i might have a nervous breakdown who knows only God knows. Only God knows. Shout out to Beyonce. Only God knows. <laughs> Only God knows. Okay. So I'll be back more with postpartum and that will be it. Um for the pregnancy series and for little baby chicken nugget. I want to come introduce it to the channel. Miss AJ. Okay. Um also her name is AJ. Her name is AJ. Um, after my late brother, AJ, who passed away. Um, her, they're her initials. Her first name is Aiden, because I know the girls want to know who is AJ. What the AJ mean? What the AJ stand for? Her name is Aiden J, and she's named after Amy Winehouse for her second name, or the actual precious stone Jade, because it has everything to do with prosperity and abundance. And that's what my baby is bringing to me, yeah. Because I got rich, 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 rich kids. Okay, my kids is rich, honey. Okay, I don't have no broke best friends. I have very rich best friends, right? very rich very rich best friends so um that's her name her uncle picked it out shout out to uncle rue um and y'all know rue on the channel he ain't been on the channel he is but y'all know rue so rue named her um and that's her name so that's miss aj she's here for us and we're here we're safe and you know i love you guys if you have any questions about postpartum or what i write in including this video let me know and i'll see you on the next one bye